Is it some devil that crawls inside of you? This is the Bad Etiquette Podcast, and I am Dallas Bronson. <laughs> I am Kylie. She has no last name. <laughs> Montgomery. There it is. I should move this water. I will fucking spill it right on the um, recorder. Yep, that would be a uh, tragedy. Uh, this is our third take? No, it's our first. Why are we so bad at this? No chemistry. That's true. It's all <laughs> physical attraction in this relationship. Barely. Yeah, and we're barely hanging on to that. Yeah, because <laughs> let's be honest, I'm not physically attractive. So Kylie's really pulling all the weight. I've gained a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of gaining weight, folks, um, I hope you enjoyed listening to me <laughs> quitting my job at crunch fitness last week Mm-hmm. i did and i quit my membership there as well you quit your membership that's right what you didn't want to spend an annual fee a hidden 79 80 fee on top of your monthly membership fee it turns out no you I didn't? didn't wow yeah what a joke uh-huh. that shit was holy shit it truly was and gross. also just uh i don't i don't oh i haven't heard the podcast oh yet. yeah you haven't yeah. yeah i'm still waiting um, on the master come on yeah, j-lo where so, are you at <laughs> kisses to you <laughs> but do you do you call him by his name jonathan yeah no, jonathan lopez no, yeah no 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 um brad yeah yeah okay brad. Yeah. i accidentally did and then i just rolled with it <laughs> okay. but I, then i realized uh, i don't care yeah, because Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Well, anyways, the fact that I was going into a place and I wanted to avoid, like, I didn't want to be working out somewhere where every time I was there, I didn't want to see. It was like getting home and like not wanting to run into like your mom or your dad in the yeah. living room because you're like a little stoned or something. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's, that's what it that's felt exactly like walking felt into like. the gym, like. I don't actually have the energy I'm pretending to have when I speak with you. I wish you weren't in the room when I walked in. <laughs> it sucks. It's like going to a family get together or like a like a family reunion, and there's like that one uncle that you're oh, just like, yeah. God, just please let me get in to the side where the good stuff is. Mm-hmm. You have he to like get through this energy. person. Uh, yeah. He had a uh, divorced uncle energy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, anyways, but you know, I I Hope did. Okay, I, Brad. I did. I did say like he was a nice guy. There wasn't you know, and he did loosen up once I said I was going to quit, and he was like real with me and everything. And I don't hold any yeah. ill feelings towards him. No. But damn if it didn't make a nice podcast to talk some shit about, and that's what I said during the podcast too. I was like, listen, sure. I am a comedian. This is my job. I'm gonna have a funny. Uh, perspective and take on it and Mm -hmm. i'm gonna talk some shit and i'm gonna say some things i don't mean because i think they're funny so that's what happened i had a good time working out when i worked out there i've never had access to that many machines definitely a lot of cool machines yeah i can say that about it nothing wrong with brad it was just you had to have a lot of energy to talk to him and yeah. That's not the energy I'm bringing when I'm going to work out. I'm yeah. dreading it. I don't want to. The only energy I have needs to be for working out. I can't waste it on interacting with people. Exactly. It was a weird area to the the gym was located. Yeah, it was weird. It was in like a fucking business park, like where the office is. Mm-hmm. And, it, and, it, it, and it's the biggest crunch in the country. This, is that a fact? That's a fact. Wait, really? That's the biggest crunch fitness. They have a fucking basketball court inside. Yeah. That's really a fact. That's a fact. Like you learned that when you were working there? Yeah. For an hour? Yeah. Oh, okay. 45 minutes. That's when I <laughs> tapped out. 
I didn't even question that anything was wrong when you texted me that you were on your way home. That's I was so like, funny. Okay. Well, because I didn't think I was going to be working that day. Remember, yeah, I thought true. like, oh, I'm going to go in, going to watch some videos. I'm going to get a name tag. I'm going to go home, jerk off. But not what happened. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. I said, oh, I want to go home because this place is a big fucking jerk off joke. Amen, sister. So. Yeah, but yeah, I was just Know weird. your worth, people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fine. It was just... <laughs> Like you should give that job to like a seventeen year old, like summer job, Absolutely. high school, that's not a what fucking, it's for. not a twenty five year old with a long resume that's making four dollars more an hour previously. That's fucking, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but that's last that's, episode's yeah. business. Last episode's business, exactly. Moving on, we have new episode stuff. Is that bruised? Jesus, is that bruised? I don't know. But why are you holding now? your toes like that? Like what? Oh, it feels good. Okay. Because in jujitsu you have to have active toes and they're bent the other way, and sometimes it feels good just to like curl these little bastards. <laughs> yeah. Looks like I'm trying to fist bump Harambe <laughs> in heaven. Uh, they're pointed downwards because he's in hell. That fucking <gasps> hairy bastard. I'm kidding. He's obviously in heaven with Anthony Bourdain and Prince and all those good people. Yeah, I've, I've seen the meme. Yeah, you know the meme. Who else is on that fucking thing? Kobe. Kobe. I think that's it. <sighs> Um. Yeah, guys, shit. <laughs> I'm happy to be back podcasting. I hope you guys enjoyed our little little commercial for the mug. I hope you guys buy a mug. If you're wondering what the fuck I'm talking about, go to the Instagram, uh, Bad Etiquette Podcast at or at Bad Ad- Bad Etiquette Podcast. We have mugs available. Mugs. Mugs. They're, They're like cute. Yeah, there's an 11 ounce and 15 ounce. They say avoid boring people, which is a double entendre. Exactly. Who doesn't love a double entendre mug? I know. Great phrase. Um, avoid boring people, which is what I try to do on this podcast. I don't want to bore you people. And also what I try to do on this bo- podcast is avoid boring people. Keep yeah. those people away from me. I don't have yeah. boring people on this podcast. Just myself. But, you know. Mm-hmm. There it is. There you have it. The explained. design, the mug explained. Yeah, it's a beautiful mug. It's a great size too. I don't Gorge. even know if I have the eleven or the fifteen ounce, but it's awesome. I don't either. I love it. Yeah. I need it. Have it. You need it. You love it. You have it. And honestly, if you guys buy one, I really appreciate it. I get like a tiny fraction of the proceeds. It is, helps support the podcast. Helps pay for the storage for the RSS feed and all of the above. Every bit of that money goes towards this project so i mean not project i don't want to call it a project projects are weird this isn't a project i'm i'm gonna be doing this my whole life i hope and i hope it's Mm -hmm. a long life what would you call it um passion project passion project well i changed like the whole fucking description of the show oh nice on the main page well people go check that out then Yeah. what is it i don't know it's it says like a a uh, safe place for dangerous ideas and uh, just uh, tag along while co- aspiring comedian Dally Brownson tries to um, navigate the world and all that good shit. I like that. Yeah, something like that. Very vague. Get stickers. I had stickers on the uh, the shop for mm. a year. No one bought a single one. Um, I figured... There's something wrong with the design or people just didn't want them. So I took them down. Try again. I'll try again. I definitely have to try again. I have to put more designs up, more stickers. Um, yeah. Shop coming soon. Yeah. More. But in the meantime, buy a mug. More merch coming soon. Yeah. Mugs. Mugs was like something I really wanted because I think mugs and stickers. Like, yeah, exactly. Who doesn't love a good mug? <laughs> Fucking idiots. Idiots. Terrorists? Exactly. Terrorists probably. Yeah. They'll probably blow mugs up. Is that what terrorists Racists? do? Racists? Racists hate mugs. Yeah, all they like is mug shots so they can hunt people with them. Or they're in the mug shots because they're in the Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah, because they're racist. Yeah. Yuck. Yuck. Blech. It sounds like we're being sarcastic. Racists are disgusting. Anyways, yeah, they really are. Yeah. Have you ever seen one? Gross. I'm sure I have. I'm sure they're among us. They walk we among us. absolutely have seen a racist. I was asking the, the, the listeners. Oh, don't answer. Just listen. <laughs> um, you're not a part of this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, How's your week been? 
dude i've had a fucking awful week oh <laughs> sorry i mean it's been good but i hurt my neck in jujitsu i haven't been in a week now mm-hmm. well it'll be a week tomorrow by the time this is out i will have not been in jujitsu for a week and i was happy to be going back yeah but i like have some sort of like bulging disc in my neck or like a kink in my neck it feels like i pinched a nerve my hand was tingly my arm was hurting my yeah. fucking shoulder blade is hurting my neck Sounds still more hurts like a pinched nerve i mean it could just be a bulging disc, but I, I did do some research. <laughs> research. <laughs> I love that I said it could just be a pinch nerve, and you <laughs> said the opposite. <laughs> so uh, I read that bulging discs, I'm hoping it's a... You love having bulging discs. D- well, n- uh, no, I do not. I n- The closest I've come to wanting to die just from pain is from my herniated disc in my back. <laughs> See? Yeah, okay. and, and honestly, sitting on the floor Love like this, them. doing great things for them both. Um, Sit I think, on the chair, dummy. Nah, I'm fine. I like this. Okay, uh, well, you heard it here first. He l- enjoys the pain. Yeah, makes me feel alive. Anyways, um, so yeah, it, honestly, I, I know I've said this before, but I know a lot of you don't listen to every episode. <laughs> the, uh, if you're ever wondering like why I'm you know a little rough around the edges, maybe a little grumpy, maybe say one too many cuss words i'm constantly in pain in something on my body hurts constantly (laughs) i've never not i've never just like sat there and went oh my god everything feels fine it's my ankles my knee my toe my wrist right now the bulging discs in my (laughs) neck not the pinched nerves Uh the herniated disc in my back i have sciatica like i'm (laughs) i'm an old man dude that's why i'm trying to fucking race to the men's clinic to get some human growth hormone build all this stuff back up you just go hard i do i do i every everything i do i suck at to the point of hurting myself i hurt myself doing everything i like how do you know that means you suck i think it just means you put a lot of effort into what you like to do because i don't have a lot to show for it other than injuries hmm She's like, yeah. No, I, 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 Listen, I disagree. I suck at keeping a consistent podcast. I still suck at jujitsu. I definitely still suck at skateboarding. Yikes. That's the biggest error is if someone told you they were doing something for 15 years, you'd be like, damn, they're probably pretty good at that. You are. No. It, no. I can take any two of my friends and just watch what a good skateboarder is. I there was like a big learning curve that I never rounded the corner on. And I don't know why. Okay. I mean, I do know why, but I'm not here to complain about it anymore. I complain about it every other week on this fucking show. But yeah, so I don't know, man, fucking everything hurts. I'm always in pain. I hurt myself. I break things. Everything hurts and you suck. (laughs) Thank you. I needed a title for this episode. Um, yeah. What are you good at? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) You're a fantastic um, singer. Thing. You play guitar is, well. I'm not I really love. good at anything, but I also don't try. And I I, I recommend it because <laughs> it keeps you out of a lot of trouble. Uh, I'm not nearly as in much pain as you are. Nope. Um, actually, I have I my own physical ailments. Mm, I disagree. How's your leg doing? How's your little knee? How's you your little scrapey scrape? You look at the right leg. I, I know. I looked at the left one. But it's the right one. Um, I think I take injury pretty well. She's just Personally. bragging because she has this big scar on her arm. Yeah. Um, you know, I eighth was... grade self harm. You know that stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm not gonna agree that you suck at everything because you don't, and that's stupid. And also, who wants to hear themselves? Who wants to hear someone say like? Oh, I suck so bad all the time. Like, that's fucking annoying. The people still downloading this podcast, apparently. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but may- maybe they're waiting around for you to say you don't suck. I don't suck at everything. Nope. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. No, um, that's not true. I don't suck at everything, but the, my favorite things I still suck at. 
I don't think that that's true. I just think that you have such a high standard for yourself. And because you're not where you think you're supposed to be, you consider that sucking. Because I know that you don't suck at skateboarding. You don't suck at podcasting. You don't suck at... I can't remember the other thing that you said. Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. You don't suck at jiu-jitsu. Suck at drawing. No, you... Um, you're, yeah, now you're just being annoying. <laughs> you're being annoying. No, I'm not. Because I'm telling you, you don't suck. No, yeah, I don't know. you're arguing with me. <laughs> I guess... Listen. You suck at arguing. Whether I... <laughs> that's... I, I'm really good at ar- arguing. Not really. I'm so good at arguing. Kylie leaves the room because she can't stand how good I am arguing. That's you know how many times she's threatened to leave. I'm so good at arguing. Uh, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Yeah. No, I, your cute uh, moneymaker here was oh, ne- next to the thing. And well, no, there's a cool feature on the recorder. I can hit the hold button mm-hmm. and it locks it. So I can press any of these buttons and they don't do anything. Oh, cool. So, anyways. Anyways. I but I all I feel the same way where I feel like things that I enjoy like I'm not really good at anything. I think we we for sure talked about this before. Yeah, you you've been on a lot. It's okay. We suck at talking about new things. You know what I suck at? Finishing books. I do too. I've also talked about that. Yeah. Are you reading a book right now? Is there a book you yeah, have? Yeah, I've something? been. Um, <laughs> well, we're sitting is, next to the books, our our communal bookshelf. So that's why I brought it up. It's um, kind of pathetic because I have been reading this book for like possibly a couple of years now, but I'm trying to finish <laughs> Hunger Makes Me a Modern Girl by Carrie Brownstein. Um, you might know her from, fuck, what's the band? Shit. The Shiwis? No. Damn, I was really close. I bet that's the chick from Portlandia. She's yeah, in the really cool band. Why don't you just grab it oh, and read Slater it? Oh, Slater Kenny. Slater Thank Kenny. you. Yeah. I'm thanking myself. Yeah. Yeah, i um, trying to finish that. I've been reading it for like two years. I mean, it hasn't taken me that long. It's just like I've put it down for a really long and while. And then <laughs> the... Uh, I'm done for today. Yeah, but I... Um, yeah, I'm trying to finish that. I have a lot of cool books up there. Um, that one's mine. <sighs> mm-hmm. I do have a lot of cool books. I think you've given me a lot of them, actually. Yeah, I was like, please just be smart. Read these. Never worked. Maybe one day. Girls are dumb. <laughs> They're not. Uh, don't come make my car, please. I. Why else has your week been bad? Why else has my week been bad? I mean, has your is your neck feeling better today? It's feeling significantly better than it was a week ago, but it's taken a lot of ibuprofen, icing, and a couple restless nights the first three mm-hmm. two to three nights were absolutely terrible yeah they i felt so bad i could like hear you like in pain every time you had to turn over it, it seriously it is so crazy how much pain the body can tolerate and i've had a really high pain tolerance most of my life uh it was one of the first compliments uh kale and luke's dad tom ever gave me nice He was like this kid's a tough kid I, I ate shit right off my skateboard sucking at it uh in front of their house and he was watching us through through the kitchen window and i just slammed right on my hip and i remember this fall as clear as day i remember what trick i was trying i remember which part of the curb it was just like they had this like asphalt curb that was kind of rounded so i wanted to like roll up and like front side grind on it do like mm-hmm. a 5 grind or whatever and I slipped right out and my whole body went right on my hip on the edge oh, of this and God. I just got up got on my skateboard and skated away with him <laughs> and he was like so impressed he told my dad about it Wow. he's like you got a tough kid here you know yeah. this is a tough kid he got here and I was like oh shit does that mean I'm tough cause I'm fucking in pain yeah. I'm dying over here that sucked Um, but yeah, just like restless nights, bad sleeping. My neck's been killing me. Sucks that I can't go to jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there is a like a kind of operative anxiety of like, oh, I quit a job. I don't have a job. That kind of sucks. Kind of makes you feel a little shitty about yourself, you know? 
I, I feel yeah. I, I feel like I'm not being as productive as I should be. Mm-hmm. Um, which is honestly uh, what's motivated me to do the podcast today too. Mm-hmm. It's like I need to have one out. I need to be doing this consistently. Well, yeah, because you no can consider this. To. I mean, it is one of your jobs. Yeah, I mean, I I want to make me being myself and expressing myself a profitable job. That, yeah. that would be the dream. Mm-hmm. That'd be the dream is just being able to express myself and get paid. Yeah. A living wage for it. Consistency is key. And especially, I just think it would be... something Brad said, too. Don't fuck off. (laughs) Um, I think that that's... Like, take this opportunity right now when you're in the midst of finding another job to use this free time to really um, put it into your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Like Like, I have no excuse not to. Yeah. I'm being so fucking lazy. Whatever. I can try to help you, I guess. I I also don't have anything going on. I mean, you've been a big help, too. I mean, you helped me with a little commercial, the little ad for the mug. That was fun. I like doing that. That that was a lot of fun. I could do... Imagine if we just did something like that for eight hours for something, like a regular job, took breaks, took lunch breaks. I think I could do that. That was really... Like, I enjoyed doing Mm -hmm. that. I think we could do it. I think there'd be something to be accomplished there i'm trying to get hired by the bad etiquette podcast <laughs> uh it's a non-profit in, 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 <laughs> non-profit internship only <laughs> damn it's non-profit right now i was looking at the fucking uh receipts for the monthly storage fees mm-hmm. holy shit <laughs> you'll get there i was gonna add them up but i was like why why be depressed yeah on a lovely evening like this um, also, Keith Huffnagel di- Huffnagel died. Huff. Many of you guys know the shoe brand, the lifestyle brand, skateboarding brand Huff. H U F. And um, honestly, not to trivialize him or his influence by any means, but one of the main things they're known for is starting the weed socks. Oh, oh, duh, yeah. He started that, and he used to have people. He used to get cease and desist letters from people that were trying to like rip off the weed socks but his like he's the one who started putting mm-hmm. the pot leaves all over the socks and they're the one of the most popular selling things in the world you know paid yeah. his rent with weed socks sales yeah. like this guy and he's also a phenomenal skateboarder and had a really great style and turns out he uh had cancer as well oh, and shit. passed away i i had no idea how old is he um maybe 43 do you know what kind of cancer he had uh no i don't i could Sounds like you did not do your research. Well, it's just so painful. I didn't need to know what killed him. You know what I mean? I I know how Fair Dylan enough. Reeder died. He had cancer. Um, Jeff Grosso died of a heart heart attack, heart failure. You know, it's the ones that like, you, like I I just need to know like a headline. Mm-hmm. The influence doesn't really stop. Like, like when someone's or when someone's so influential, it's like the cause of death isn't so necessary. Yeah. Like once I found out Anthony Bourdain died, it. I mean, that was the worst. Finding out the details only made it worse. Yeah, I mean, shit, that's horrible. It makes it like easily the most complex feelings for a celebrity death that I've mm-hmm. ever had, because he meant so much to me too. Mm-hmm. Um. So that was really interesting. Someone chose to take their own life because it's like, damn, like we loved you so much. I wish that could have been enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a common thing amongst celebrities killing themselves. Like, that, I mean, that's a thought that like fans have, you know, yeah. it's hard not to. But also it's like weird as someone who's not famous and doesn't have fans to think like, you had all of these people who like idolize you and you still killed yourself. What the fuck am I doing here? Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, well, that's the joke that Dave Chappelle made in his new oh special. Oh my God, he, I haven't even seen it. So basically yeah. I'm as funny as Dave Chappelle, everyone. <laughs> I hope you heard that. She's as transphobic as Dave Chappelle. <laughs> no, I am the, um, I am the PC Dave Chappelle also the pc white. dc um yeah his joke was basically his opening joke was uh he ran into this friend who like was a loser and he's like 
damn, you never thought about just fucking killing yourself? Because <laughs> yeah. Anthony Bourdain had all the best life there was, and he did it. <laughs> and oh, it really? Never it's occurred. about Anthony yeah, yeah, Bourdain? Yeah, like oh, straight up. Funny. Like It, it was kind of hard for me to like palate at first. Is that his it's, new special? Yeah. Oh, I need yeah. to watch that still. I mean, I anytime you want to watch any stand-up special, I'm down. Because it's, like, right. it's like... It's like homework. Are you okay? I know who's special I want to watch. Yeah. Who? I just got Who's? excited. I really want to watch. Oh, I'm going to fuck up her name. Um, I just kind of found her. Her name is Esther. Esther? Oh, yeah. Esther? Little Esther? Yeah. I, uh, Little she, Esther? Um, uh, they always called her Little Esther. Oh, okay. I don't know her last name. Uh, hot for my name is mm-hmm. the special. Have you seen it already? No. Oh, uh-uh. Okay. It sounds really funny. I want to yeah. see it. I just started following her on Instagram. I think she's so I saw cute that. and funny. Yeah, she is. She's adorable. She's funny. She. I like that she's a New York uh, comic too. Like that's uh, always a big, like bonus cool points for me because yeah. I. New Yorkers are just cool. <laughs> my, yeah, I have like an affinity for East Coast things. Yeah. My grandfather is from Manhattan. I like love things from I. A lot of the time, I think of just moving to New York and just being a comedian there. Uh-huh. But, That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I loved Mary Kay and Ashley's New York Minute. Exactly. Yeah, See, we're you get we're it. right there. You know, we are one in the same. Exactly. Uh, I remember nine eleven. Like, you know what? I do too. Believe it or not, we just went to a museum. We did. Oh my I god! What know. a segue! What a segue! We just went to a museum because we are intelligent, fun, cool, hip. We are fucking. And they had a police vehicle that was, uh, you know, there. Yeah. It, in nine eleven. So they have this thing called Port Authority, which is an actual like. I thought that was a, uh, like a brand of something, like a store. Like, isn't Port Authority like a fucking? I don't know. A store like Old, old Navy or something. Anyways, no. uh, there was a Port Authority um, police cruiser from 9-11 still with debris on it, still it crazy. dust in there. So one of the vehicles from 9-11 was in this Air and Space Museum, the San Diego Air and Space Museum. You can go visit it there now. Yeah, it's you, awesome. You can go right now. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, they close at five. So <laughs> <laughs> I, they were closing and we were just like lolly. It was actually four thirty. At four thirty, That's yeah. even worse. Jesus. Um, yeah. 1995. So. That's how much the tickets are. If you want to go. Mm-hmm. It was nice. Uh, I loved the museum. Uh, you forget that like museums can really teach you things. Yeah, shocking. I don't know. Like, the idea of museums is like, oh, I'm going to walk in. I'm going to look at some dumb thing. I'm going to make a (laughs) dumb jerk-off motion and go, oh, this guy was deep. Ooh, what does this mean? You know, like museums, you're you're thinking about falling asleep. The tour guide, like, is you're thinking about, you know, I don't know. But actually, I just saw a video recently of Mark Norman and Joe List going Uh on a museum tour. Oh, cool. And like then they were just making jokes about things, mm-hmm. so I was like, "Oh, oh okay. that's funny!" Well, like that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe that sounds maybe. like um, a school field trip. Yeah, and it just sounds like they were like on a, a privatized school field trip. Mm-hmm. If you hear slamming noises in the background, it's our quiet as a mouse roommate, Hannah. Love you. Yeah. Um. But so I was like, "All right, cool." Fucking, we're walking up. We park in Balboa Park. About to check this place out. Just visiting. Just checking out the just area. Checking out. You know, just trying to look at something cool and explore the area. And uh, there's a lot of people out in the park. And there's, it's like this really dense area with all these like kinds of attractions. It was really cool. It's still bizarre, and I'm still not like I still don't fully understand, understand what, it what it was I know. or all that was there because we stayed in a. I mean, I, I have that. to be honest. Like I was a there were a lot of people and I it was outside but like I still don't feel like being like right up against people outside well yeah me neither I don't like I have to really I'm more grossed out by anything like being around people nowadays um but yeah just like it was super touristy which regardless Mm -hmm. pandemic or not I've never been attracted to very touristy areas yeah 
Are you talking about gas lamp or Balboa no, Park? No, I'm talking about Balboa. Okay, like when we'll we were get driving there. up, there yeah. were like just so many people. There around. was a lot of people. We did. And they find were all on scooters and shit. I know those fucking dumb Yuck. like rent scooter things. They're if probably you, fun. They're probably fun, but I hope all of you fall off of them. I don't. I, be safe. Th- yeah, be safe. Bring a helmet. No, you know what? Wait, someone didn't. Doesn't someone we know like really fuck themselves up on one of those? Or did I, I think there it? was an yeah. influencer that died. Oh. In LA, I'm okay. pretty sure. Oh, I thought it was like bad news. It was like something. It was like really bad. <laughs> um, yeah, rest in peace, influencer. Uh, I'm taking your spot. <laughs> Clearly. Oh my god. Um, no one could have influenced them to wear a fucking helmet. Jesus Christ, Hannah. <laughs> is she doing that shit on purpose yes she's out to get you oh my god no she's out to get a fucking another noise complaint anyways um balboa park was so fucking dense and we had to pee bad yeah. because we are hydrated folks and there's these big ass planes in a building i i saw on the map that there was bathrooms over here so i was like oh let's go over here there's bathrooms by this fucking museum mm-hmm. so we walk across this we pavement were walking. through mm-hmm. the construction zone it was closed we're walking we're walking my mm-hmm. cock is flopping we get there the bathrooms are fucking closed they're locked they're closed up i don't get why the public bathrooms this amazing building with the best services a park can have are fucking locked like old who looks like an old who scow if you know what those <laughs> I don't are, know what that that's is. the old jail they oh. threw you in in it like old west. It looked really run down. It looked run down, and there was like iron bars. It looked yeah. like somewhere you'd put like a prisoner of war, uh-huh. and it it was just like, what are you hiding that I can't use the fucking bathroom? So yeah. we had to walk up, and I was like, well, at least you know we can check out this uh, San Diego Air and Space Museum. So he said, if I walk up, I'm gonna want to go in. <laughs> that's exactly what I was like. Yeah, I was like, if I walk up, I'm gonna want to go in. So because you gotta you gotta understand when you're walking up to this building there's a real full size stealth bomber over the fucking entrance to the museum and then a whole nother plane that i have no fucking idea of what it is because it's not a stealth bomber i it probably wasn't even a stealth bomber but it's a full-size fucking plane and you don't even realize how big these like fighter jets are mm-hmm. these two jets that are just on like big iron what do you call them uh obelisks big fucking things holding them up i don't know i'm sorry i don't know big iron pillars and it looked it looked cool and it was giving me school field trip nostalgia yeah and like theme park vibes and it, it's oh, like really yeah, like walking intimidating up was giving me disneyland vibes because it was like look at this giant you have no idea how big like fighter jets are until you're next underneath one and you're yeah, like spooky. this is where the bombs come um they're fucking massive so we walk up and then there's this lady sitting out there on her fucking phone as usual i mean that's what i would do if i had her job i I did that Mm -hmm. at my last job i'm doing that at my next job i foresee it so you know she's like oh you know read the rules read the questions she she had a sign with three questions and you had to answer them and she kind of says this through her mask and i'm also wearing a mask so i'm just like what the fuck did I say? And she's like, I answer three questions and then I say, 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 and go away. I go, okay, 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 okay. And I, uh, So I looked and I was like, um, uh, yeah, no, nope, uh, I'm good. Like, that's all I said. Mm-hmm. One was like, have you been around someone infected with COVID? Have you had any symptoms of blah, 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 blah? Do you p- pinky swear, <laughs> pinky promise to wear a mask throughout the whole museum? And mm-hmm. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. same, good. And then Kylie actually went up and like read them and answered them appropriately. And I was like, all right, cool, we're I walking in. I couldn't hear you. I thought you did too, but no, also not at all. I wanted to be respectful. I know, I want to be respectful too, but I was like, if you think I heard you, you're fucking crazy. I'm giving you the equal amount of respect that my ears heard given <laughs> to me. So, And then we walked in and I got a cool free stylist Ooh. and paid $42 to go look at some old planes. 39 and actually. 39 whatever. Nice and, try. Um, well, I was just trying to get some extra scratch. You know what I mean? Uh, Venmo me at Dallas slash Gardner one. Um, I thought it was bad Dallas. That's the cash app. Oh, gotcha. 
which well, people here, here you go here's your promo for cash app no i think that's actually is it i don't know the cash app anyways the promo for the paypal was bad dallas oh which um i had a I made some money off that that was nice cool thanks guys thanks guys thanks clara thanks clara it, it was just her <laughs> she's okay, well, <laughs> um we go into this fucking beautiful beautiful museum walk in rush to the bathroom look at all these pretend to look at these portrait to ca- pretend to care through the first attraction which which is just this hallway of portraits mm-hmm. of like cool you know famous pilots and stuff people yeah, stuff people. yeah you know chime in anytime you were there too um <laughs> <laughs> and then we just like we're passing the space attraction and i was like oh yeah uh, let's go to the bathroom and then come back and go to space. I was, I got a little anxiety going into the space like section. Butterflies, yeah, because space freaks me out. It was fun. It was exciting. It, it wasn't nearly. It's just when the entrance looked like it was going to be maybe like a dark room that like it made does you look feel like, like you're going you into in a, the haunted house of space. Yeah, but once you're in there, it's not that. Yeah, at all. it opens right up. They're like, just kidding. Don't I, be scared. I think I wanted it to be more of like um. A Star Tours vibe. Yeah. Oh, it definitely gave gave the store Star Tour vibes immediately, and then uh, as soon as you walk uh, like ten feet uh, past the entrance, it's gone. But yeah, it was cool. You know, we got to see some fucking some space. This capsule that was actually in space that mm-hmm. actually had fucking astronauts in yeah, there, that was cool. and it was just like these motherfuckers were in here above space. You do, you don't even understand what like humans are capable of creating and like building and like technology wise until you see these mm-hmm. fucking things yeah it was really surreal it was so weird and it's like we just made things and sent people up there and they didn't explode or die I mean, some of them did sorry yeah. challenger <laughs> um but like the ones who made it we like mm-hmm. <clears throat> fucking talking too much here um what's name? <laughs> It was, just, it was, it was, I didn't mean to shut you down. No, I know. But like, by all means, chime in. I'm telling the whole story here. You were there too. Uh, I'm enjoying your retelling. I'm reliving. Thank you. That's beautiful. The space capsule. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> the, the, like you, you really got to go to a museum to like learn yeah, something go. new because it's the, tangibility of something right before your eyes and being able to maybe touch it maybe not touch it take mm-hmm. pictures you know it uh also we saw some of the space suits like some of the astronaut suits yeah Those that were was so weird. fucking cool yeah there was like this motherfucking thing was in space and it like i know how like sometimes like you know army uniforms or like like football uniforms like old sports uniforms like they make you feel cool they look cool you look, feel good in them you know you feel like oh I'm in my jujitsu gi or maybe i'm in like my fight shorts and i got my boxing gloves or whatever on you know it's like it you're standing in front of them and you're like this thing's fucking cool like maybe i could have been an astronaut like this is fucking yeah like, i think like when you when we were looking at one of them and you were like this has been in space yeah it, it really like put it into perspective i don't know why like you saying that like was like oh yeah well i had to say it to like convince myself because yeah I, I could look at something and been like oh yeah that was in space and then not say anything mm-hmm. and then it, it just is like every other thought like yeah. oh like like that, you know. it was it was really like it was cool and it was special yeah. and also something that's interesting is like i don't think i've done anything like that like which is so sad because i'm 24 now but gone to a museum like that mm-hmm. and like looked and read and seen all that since i've been in like school and mm-hmm. gone on a field trip like i haven't really gone to a museum and just, especially like a space museum mm-hmm. i think i've been to an art museum but um it was cool to go to a place like that and actually be able to understand and appreciate what you were seeing. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was a fun experience and I highly recommend it. But see, the space was, 
uh, cooler than the airplanes. I know, because as soon as we got out of the space exhibit, the, it ends with a moon rock. Yeah. Which was cool. cool. And I was like, wow, how cool is this? And you like, get to pretend that you're landing a space Oh, yeah, craft? I forgot all about that. You, I forgot to mention that. So they have these flight simulators. Si- simulators? Simulators? Yeah. And, uh... What what did you do? You did the landing yeah, of the I like landed. space I shuttle. Crashed three times. You crashed three I never times. It. Yeah. Jeez, Sally Ride is riding <laughs> over in her grave right now. Yikes! Yeah. Embarrassing. Anyways, uh, I got to do. I got to connect a shuttle to the International Space Station. Yeah, that's which cool. I did perfectly, which was nice. really weird. I mean, all I had to do was just like move a trigger over some. You were actually landing. You probably had to got to do the funner one. Even though you fucking crashed three times and killed astronauts. I think I just killed myself. Oh. Huh. What can he do? That's true. But, but that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Fuck, what is uh, that keyhole button works really well. <laughs> <laughs> Still, no, working really well. Come on. Okay, maybe J Lo will cut that out in post. I don't know. I <laughs> fucking don't. It doesn't matter. This is a, I, I just remind myself every time something's clunky, it's the bad etiquette podcast. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. So the fucking as soon as we got out of the space exhibit, everything else was like kind of lackluster because it, it's dustier and stuffier and stinkier. But yeah. we you walk out like right by this red baron looking fucking biplane. And there's like machine guns on it. And I know Kylie doesn't give a shit about that, but I was like, holy fucking shit. Like one of my fucking fantasies this in the past year or two is like, what if I was in the 101st airborne and I got to jump out of a plane or maybe I was in a fighter jet or like had to be like someone's machine gunner, like Mm -hmm. just watching, I was just watching like a bunch of world war two shit. And I was like really exciting to see like all these old, insignias and different uh patches and like um like symbols they had for different uh like divisions and yeah. shit i don't even know what to call them because i'm so like ignorant and beta male compared to those heroes those badasses fucking one of them was literally um like a indian chief head like with like razor teeth Mm -hmm. and it had the um the like you know the swastika but the backward it's the backwards one so it's like going Mm counterclockwise which um is like the you'll see it a lot in uh asian um cultures it's like this i don't it's like a it's a symbol of like peace and prosperity or whatever um which is really ironic because the nazis took it and and Mm -hmm. rotated it and everything but that was there was like swastikas straight up you know backwards albeit if if you notice you notice if you don't you know whatever you not everyone knows um just like on old like world war one fucking like fighter planes like what the fuck that's Mm -hmm. so cool it's Mm -hmm. so crazy because in the next war america was in like that logo was not fly (laughs) that was not happening (laughs) you know what i mean and then it was really cool it was really cool to see like the uh fighter jets with all the uh they like tally all the nazis they killed so you'd see like a row of swastikas and then like Mm -hmm. there'd be like a row of uh the rising sun flags for someone who was in two wars like or not two wars but fought in the pacific and in europe oh okay it's crazy yeah. just really cool shit like i love my, my grandfather was a pilot he wasn't in any of those wars but mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was really cool it just uh yeah like got i got really lost in there you know agreed it felt great but uh yeah after we kind of moseyed on out of the space section then that like kind of antiquated section we came across that 9-11 display yeah that was crazy i did not expect to see that in there i knew there was gonna be something about it a lot of random ass shit there it was definitely like there wasn't a lot of flow i mean it was kind of all tied it was tied together somehow everything yes there was not a lot of flow that was the only 9-11 thing they had and then it went Mm -hmm. to like nazi germany yeah and, and then there's a you know what was weird that we didn't talk about these there's uh 
these fucking when you first walk into the museum there's this animatronic charles Lindbergh. that's what made me feel like i was talking at Disneyland. to you and like looking at you and it's like fucking creepy those things creep me out yeah creepy. but they also make me feel like i'm at disneyland so yeah. it's like a little exciting mm-hmm. that is yeah i get that also terrifying also it shows you how far uh, sex dolls have come <laughs> um but we got to the 9-11 display and it i got hot and sweating i was sweating i felt like there was like needles all over me i yeah. felt like a little lightheaded it, and then wa- watching the footage, the news coverage that is just playing mm-hmm. the whole time, like on a monitor in front of the sectioned off police cruiser was like, uh, I don't know, nauseating. Like I've, I watched it live when I was a kid, but the concept of it wasn't really hitting like it does as an Same, adult. Yeah. And I, I honestly, I got to say with each passing year, 9-11 seems like more and more upsetting to me okay like when i see it and i see people and i see like the amount of like death and destruction and how like if that happened right now today that would be a completely different feeling than i felt Mm -hmm. when i was seven years old when it happened or six years old when it happened yeah but it also yeah and i mean it caused a lot of destruction in so many ways yeah, Which like is crazy. Like it doesn't end there. It, yeah. th- that's the haunting thing and I think why there's so much more to the way 9/11 makes me feel with each passing year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I'm, I'm not going to speak for you. I don't know how you feel about it, but yeah. it literally my life was just starting. I was in kindergarten, maybe first grade. Thank you. And then I, first, yeah, I was in kindergarten. Yeah, and then I went to school one day and then nothing was the same ever again yeah and so my tra- the trajectory of my uh, life starting was completely changed primary school is different um it, all of a sudden middle eastern people were bad mm-hmm. just by default now yeah um bush well, there, every, there was no republican so versus democrat when i was a kid it was like oh, we gotta beat the taliban or al-qaeda yeah. or you know iraq's bad and and then uh, it, it's so weird but i got goosebumps while looking at that and i was like getting choked up mm-hmm. looking at everything and seeing it yeah me you, too when we were watching that video because yeah i i mean it happened when i was a kid and i specifically remember my mom picking me up from school that day and she was like just crying mm-hmm. and she was trying to explain to me what happened and i grasped some sort of concept yeah. but not really and then like i remember <laughs> who was it alan jackson or someone like mm-hmm. came out with that song yeah. like where were you when the world stopped turning oh god <laughs> if that's the song i'm thinking of it's a fucking hit and if you don't <laughs> like sure, alan yeah, it's jackson a, it's a slammer for sure you. but i just remember like that because i think i just connected more emotionally to music like that song did make me like understand the seriousness a little bit of the matter yeah but um I never really like went back because I know there's like a lot of stuff on YouTube you can search like you can see videos of people who watched it happen Mm -hmm. or at least the second uh, building get hit Um, but I've never really like gone back and done my research um, to you know watch news reports or anything during that time and I'm too young to specifically remember Uh, and so watching that like I really wanted to watch the whole thing to like yeah. grasp a bit more yeah. understanding of like how terrifying it was and how like real time it was happening for everyone, uh, which is even crazier. Um, but yeah, it was it was really emotional and it did maybe or nope sorry can't talk. It did make me have a better understanding of how devastating it was. Not that I didn't know, but you know just yeah. made me connect more to it because i was so young when it happened that there was a little bit of disconnect i know there's people that are walking around that are born after the fact that have no yeah uh like comprehension of That's what that okay, felt like because now they lived through a pandemic so they have enough to worry about <laughs> well i mean that's like really interesting too to compare the two mm-hmm. because it, it is there is a lot of comparisons of 
uh, the way the whole uh, of the world was changed. Whether mm-hmm. you think it was just America, like uh, America inflicted itself on the world a hell of a lot more after nine <laughs> yeah. eleven, and pandemic changed everything, changed the world, and and so many people died because of this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I don't know how many people altogether have been killed because of the wars we've had taken out in oh the middle God, east sure com- you know yeah. and, and i think globally they said a million people have died from uh covid yeah which is crazy too yeah, yeah. crazy times and the sense of community too like everyone was affected by After both 9/11. of those things yeah, yeah. well in the beginning of the pandemic, there was a sense of community. Oh. Now it's become a political issue. Which exactly is what happened Which, with 9-11. Yeah. So, I mean, and that that sucks, but that's its, its that, own that's issue. The, that, well, I mean, it, it does suck, but I mean, it's going towards something, some sort of jagged path of healing or reconstruction. We'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we're still doing still reconstructing from 9-11 emotionally and as a country and tsa is jesus christ fucking, i didn't even realize like i thought to me airplanes airports always had that kind of security yeah. no tsa was like no after the fact i remember mm-hmm. when i was a kid and like the liquids you couldn't bring certain like amounts of liquids or like hair gel onto mm-hmm. planes and i was like what the fuck that's fucking hilarious mm-hmm. i i yeah anyways so yeah that was really emotional yeah that was wild yeah, that but, was, uh, yeah. Sorry. <sighs> it was it was it, it was a fucking trip to see like an actual vehicle from the scene of nine eleven. You yeah. know, I've never been to New loner. York. It was a loner. A they loner. were just loaning it. Yeah, and they they didn't know who it belonged to or, yeah, or whatever happened to it. Yeah, that was the craziest thing. They didn't have any specifics of like its history yeah who it belonged to or anything like, like that. they don't know who's like, driving it they don't know if that person know, lived yeah they don't know if that or person happened died. to them That's, yeah. that was kind of crazy to me and i guess because it wasn't like a police cruiser from like a precinct it was like mm-hmm. the the port authority so it was like just someone that drove around the uh the ports and the docks and all that shit i don't know yeah or something like that um it might have had some versatility to it in, mm-hmm. in terms of who drove it so you yeah. really don't know who was driving it that day or what happened to them and i like to think that someone's just sitting there you know with a ptsd just sitting there watching netflix and he's like hmm, what, 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 what I, happened to my car <laughs> i for sure just assumed they're dead yeah absolutely there's so much possibility in turn I, I mean i don't know where the car was necessarily mm-hmm. but it was fucked up mm-hmm. you know yeah, that, that I mean, I've scary. done worse to a car, but it it, yeah, it definitely got out of it, like, mm-hmm. with some scrapes and bruises. Highly recommend. Check. Go to a, go to a museum. Wear, wear your mask. Go to a museum. Yeah. And if, if they're open around you, just fucking go. Like, it's a... It's really fun, or a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. And mm-hmm. not only that is, like... Well, I made it fun because I was like, I'm spending $20 to get in here. It's going to be as fun <laughs> as I can possibly make it or it I'm mad. It was good. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting. But like, I don't know if people are feeling weird about like going out and doing things. I felt I felt really safe being there because you're not yeah. really tu- you're not supposed to touch anything. And there's no one in fucking museums anyway. Yeah, exactly. No one was there. We weren't like close to anyone at all. I did not cross paths with another person yeah, there. And they had like hand sanitizer everywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like a it's a good um, good environment. And also, I think they need support right now because people aren't really going out and going to museums or like you know. Yeah, that that's one thing is like I didn't feel like I was surrendering twenty dollars to someone for some cheap thing. I felt yeah. like cool. I'm giving this museum money so more pe- there can be cool exhibits and attractions, and they can have things on loan and learn uh-huh. things. And yeah. and it was in this like odd place in Balboa Park next to the Starlight Amphitheater, which is like closed down and like has graffiti on it, and it's just like super creepy and like looks. A band, you know, it's a band. Yeah, it, creepy it music was playing from the stage. Around. Yeah, it was weird. So. It was cool though. Yeah. Then we went to the gas lamp quarter. 
I'm still calling it, it the gas lamp district. I, that's because I was calling it that. But gas lamp not what district must be somewhere else. Yeah. Red light district, I think is what you're thinking of. But they have the gas lamp district somewhere too. Oh, they do? Yeah, I think that might be actually uh, in fucking Nolens, Louisiana. Oh, maybe. New Orleans. I don't know. I think so. I think that's where it is. I think that's what it's named after because it gave you that vibe being there anyways. Oh, yeah, it did. I even yeah. said that. What did you think of it? Um, I liked the vibe it gave because it was very reminiscent of like a, uh, like a cute little New Orleans, you mm-hmm. know, not like a Mardi Gras. It wasn't crazy, but there was like a lot of people out and there was like a lot of restaurants open and mm-hmm. there was just like, every, everyone was there just kicking it. It seemed really cool. I didn't get those gross, like clicky vibes that slow put off for some oh, reason yeah i mean it was pretty different it's very different it wasn't like vendors and shit these are just like all the restaurants and places that could be open it's just a series of like good restaurants and cool restaurants and um boy did i pick the loudest possible <laughs> fucking restaurant to sit in yeah not ideal for a n- nightly outing or date but the food is really good yeah <sighs> so and i had one of my favorite drinks I've ever had. Oh, I know. You had whiskey. Kylie had whiskey. I'm not a whiskey drinker, She's guys. She's not a whiskey drinker. I'm a tequila girl and... A vodka vixen. Vodka, but vodka makes me vicious. Yeah. I don't. I think vodka makes anyone vicious. I think if I drank enough vodka... Uh, even if I didn't drink enough vodka, I think I'd just get in fights with people. Verbally or physically. Maybe. I mean, I do, so. Yeah, that's for sure. But, yeah, I actually usually hate whiskey, but I do like some Jameson. You do like some Jameson. It's a good whiskey to like. It is most palatable to me. And, yeah, what was it called? I don't even remember. It was some, like, whiskey sour punch thing. It was, like, a cherry cherry oh yeah there's cherry anyway what you said it tastes like cough medicine yeah it did which it fucking did because it was the drink i ordered and she (laughs) ordered a watermelon like vodka mule and we had to trade yeah we traded drinks and i was just kind of weird which has never happened because there was never a never would i have expected that i would be accepting a vodka drink over a whiskey drink and kylie would be like hell yeah i want that whiskey fucking we are growing and changing and then afterwards on the way home a couple hours later we stopped at a bar and she got (laughs) fucking whiskey sours you're a crazy girl i am jameson whiskey sours yeah except that one yeah so i made the mistake of ordering the second round of drinks i got a jack and coke for myself because i needed some you know some sparkly tongue juice on there and uh i got you a whiskey sour i didn't say jameson i'm so sorry and it mm. wasn't the right whiskey it was so foul. so that was like the the end of kylie's whiskey adventures sans J- jameson yeah i still don't like whiskey unless it's jameson that has not changed i mean that's good because if i ever get whiskey i don't have to worry about it just disappearing one day when i get home you know true i do um thank your brother for liking whiskey sours though because got you he into made him. me one that one time no yeah. he didn't he told me how to make one told you how to make <laughs> one? i made one yeah but it was also with jameson and it was really good fuck yeah mm-hmm. anyways how was your week it was also okay yeah. or not so good it wasn't so good, but it was good. What was not so good about it? Something horrible happened to me. Oh. And I have yet to recover from it. Yeah, me too. But, um... Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, I guess. Talking about things, therapeutic. Puts it into perspective. We'll find out. <laughs> Basically, you and I decided we were going to go to the beach... It's like thinking about it now, I want to say that it all felt off going to the beach because that wasn't even the first suggestion of like what we were going to do that day. What were we going to do? Go to the mall? You were, yeah, we were just going to go to the mall instead and then come back and do something. I don't even know. I don't even know either. Bang, maybe? Yeah, Have probably a drink. that. Yeah, probably that. Mm. I don't know, but it wasn't the first choice, but I felt like I wanted to go to the beach because we hadn't been in a while. 
which is strange for us living in this beautiful sun ridden paradise mm-hmm. and so you and I decided to go to the beach and I asked if you wanted to go to a beach that was closer I hadn't been to it yet it's not like the nicest beach or anything but it was just a little more convenient and I didn't think we were gonna get in the water because it was co- it's gotten colder and Dallas is a big bitch about being in cold water <laughs> so I I kind of written off uh, swimming I just thought we were ca- gonna sit at the beach and enjoy our day which is what we should have done but we got to the beach at first we were like oh this is great like it's such a cool beach um, because it's one of those that um, the waves crash really close to like the the peak of the wave is at like the edge of the beach and the beach like dips down there's like a sand hill it descends yeah yeah it descends right in so so it's like it it's like when you're looking at it from a distance it's like you're gonna fall off a cliff into the ocean it's not that dramatic it's like east beach in santa barbara sure yeah Yeah. if you know that yeah I think it's more dramatic than that. Though. Way more dramatic than that. There's there's a there's a dip. There's a a big um, hill. What do you call it? Yeah. Okay. Ledge. There's a sand hill ledge. Yeah. Anyways, so Dallas decides he's gonna get in the water. Turn. It was fine. The water didn't feel ha uh, like too cold. No, the water was fine. The water's fine. It was fine. Better than usual. For the cold waves water. were really fucking intense. They were so intense. Really intense. Like and they're crashing right where you first step in the water. Yeah. There was no tiptoeing into the water. So they like, were crashing you, against the side of the hill, so it was like yeah. smacking. Yeah, it was like smacking. It wasn't into a flat it. surface I, I, like a regular beach. Yeah, exactly. And I know there's like some terms for this that someone for knows sure. that I don't we're know, but we're just like fucking. Idiots. But we're beach tards, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was just. It seemed really. Um, Precarious. Mm-hmm. Good work. Um, there were some girls that were getting in next to us and even like one of the girls was scared to get in, which like I was, I was right there with her. Dallas got in right away. The waves were literally crashing on top of him, like knocking him down really hard. And I just kind of was standing there, uh, letting my feet hit the water, but that was it. And then I kind of was getting in deeper um, I tried to get in deeper. I tried. I wanted to get my hair wet. I had gotten a bunch of one of the waves knocked me over, and mm-hmm. I was covered in sand. Well, yeah. The worst part of this beach was where the or the, the sand that was closest to the ocean was all like pebbles and little rocks and it stuff. Was the it most wasn't just sand. Rocks ever. It did not feel good. Not I mean, at it hurt all. even more. But mind you, if you were getting knocked down by the wave, you were like hitting your head on the side yeah. of the the sand. Just covered in fucking sand yeah it was not it wasn't pleasant so uh honestly i i (laughs) you take it from i I will okay so i tried to get out of the ocean because at this point my hair is i was like i'm (gasps) done i remember what okay sorry go ahead okay we were gonna get out yeah and then as i was getting out (laughs) my my swim bottoms were full oh, of sand. Oh, they were like crazy. Yes, it was as if I had shit my swim. Which, which this happens from time to time, where sand will get in your bikini or whatever. Yeah, it but happens not often. to this extent. <laughs> yeah, that it was, quickly. We we're there, maybe yeah. not even in the water five fucking minutes. I didn't even get in all the way. It was just a yeah. wave had like crashed on and top of me. There was so much sand there in was the so waves. Much, yeah, it was as if I had shit my my bikini bottoms. Yeah. And so I was getting in really quick or trying to get some water to like get it out Mm -hmm. because it was really obviously uncomfortable. And anyways, you can take it from there because that's where that's why I was in there. I remember now, which makes it even sadder. So I had tried to go out further, even though I didn't want to because I had been knocked down so hard by this wave. Yeah, that's why we were getting out because it was so it was too intense. Anyways, sorry. I keep trying. You see, the, the I had so much sand in my hair and like in my pockets, just like you had in your bikini. So I was like, "Fuck!" I I couldn't stand it. I, it was mm-hmm. like it was covered. It was like so much sand. Like I, you know, when you scratch your scalp and it's just nothing but rocks. I was yeah. covered in. I looked like one of the fucking sea creature pirates in Dead Man's Chest, Pirates of the Caribbean. Fucking, you know. Yeah. And I. 
God. I went back in to like get it out. And Kylie's also trying to get the sand out of her fucking bikini and shit. And um, I'm getting up and I'm trying to walk out. And mind you, there's this like old lady next to us with um, like diving flippers on. And she's just kind of like floating in the water. And she's it sitting looks on like, her butt. She's sitting on her butt. Um, but before we had kind of seen her and and she looked like she was just, you know, letting the waves kind of carry her. She's she just having a good time. She just it looked like she was smiling. And uh, Kylie's like, Kylie even made a comment where she was like, what if she was just like, help? <laughs> and uh, turns out uh, you, you hit the fucking nail on the head there Mm -hmm. i was trying to get out finally i was so fed up with this beach there was sand everywhere and then i'm walking and then i don't remember what oh me and this woman are she's trying to get out of the beach too but Mm -hmm. the the waves are literally knocking us over and pulling us in and finally i don't even i'm almost i'm to the edge there's no water where i'm standing but the waves crash into this fucking hill so hard it takes me and this old lady off of our feet just takes just trips me Mm -hmm. like i like just like you see someone just get knocked right on their butt and she had just stood up she just finally stood up and i get up and i'm like so disoriented and kylie is trying to get up and the wave splashes her and takes i had fallen too i was sitting on my butt too yeah you okay i didn't even know because i got knocked yeah. down by the beach uh the wave and and your ring came off my ring what the wave was pulling so hard that it started slipping between my fingers and i felt it pulling my ring off and i was trying to keep my fingers together tight enough to stop it from mm-hmm. pulling off because it, it was like someone was just ripping my ring just from my hand and you had asked the lady if she needed help at the same time mm-hmm. that my ring was coming off and I looked at you and I said oh my god no my ring and I was like I, I didn't know what you could have done probably nothing but it was like panic and then you had to go help that woman and god damn it and I, like, I shouldn't have been wearing my ring in the ocean anyways, but I don't even, I wear that ring all the time. That I didn't yeah. even, like, I didn't it's a part think of about you. it. Yeah. And to a little background on the ring, it was a ring I had given Kylie on Christmas. Um, it's just the a first s- ring you've ever It's given. the only piece of jewelry I've given her. And it was, it's a little silver ring, has a little tiny, tiny, tiny little diamond in there. Um, but it was also the only piece of real jewelry my dad had given my mom when they were together and my mom had kept it for all these years. So I, I was having a hard time last Christmas and I didn't really know what to get Kylie. I didn't really have a lot of money. And my mom said, here, give this to Kylie. I don't have any use for it anymore this is something your dad gave me and i was like okay that's awesome she's gonna love this this is perfect Mm -hmm. so it was the only piece of jewelry that my mom had been given she gave it to me to give to kylie a lot of sentimental value i won christmas with it gave it to her detailed the background It it meant a lot to her and mind you i already feel absolutely violated by the ocean like there's sand everywhere in my hair in my fucking shorts like it hurts oh that's another thing is it was in my ear is Mm -hmm. there there was so much in my ear and it was just like rocks in my ear and it was like this is like hazardous like i can't be here yeah so i tried to get out and then i'm i get knocked on my ass so does the lady i get up and you go oh no my ring and then once i had seen that it wasn't on your finger anymore i i had just turned to this old lady and i said are you okay and she looks like she's smiling Mm -hmm. like she was earlier Mm -hmm. but i was like i don't know about this so i asked her because i just got knocked on my 220 pound ass and fucking kerplunked i was like there's no way she is as you know, if I'm in pain all the time, she's mm-hmm. not probably doing well. So I asked her, I was like, are you okay? And she like 
has like a funny look on her face and I look and her eyes are like bloodshot red so burned from the salt water around the edges Mm -hmm. and once I, once I asked her, she looked at me and she said, shook her head and went, no. And I went, oh, shit. And as I do this, Kylie loses her ring and it comes off in this ferocious fucking wave that's taking everything from us. Her good day, my fucking comfortability, uh, my balance, this old lady's uh, last life she has left. And um, I literally have to make this split second decision of help Kylie find this really important piece of sentimental jewelry or or help this lady that's getting taken by this wave and Mm -hmm. knocked over again and again and I know that sounds dramatic but there's no reason it was so dramatic it was was such a fucking like switch in the train tracks what you know kill one person kill five people save people whatever and it was just like I had to, it was one of the most painful things to look and go, that ring's not coming back. Go help this lady. Because I had to essentially say, I'm not going to be there for my girlfriend and help her find this ring that I gave her. And it really did hurt to do that. And it hurt to see the heartbreak in her face of her doing that. And then I had to help this lady and she really could not get up. I had to really pull. Yeah. Mind you, I'm fucking still hurting. Got a bulging disc in my neck, not a pinched nerve. And then I'm... <laughs> helping her up and have to like you know carry like or help you know have her lean on me and walk her up to like the safe part of the sand which Mm -hmm. is still getting fucking hit with water and she just kind of moses on over and kylie's looking for it and i couldn't you know just tell her not to look for it like i don't i don't know what the chances of finding the ring were but I, i looked for a really long time she looked for probably almost an hour in on the beach and i know that doesn't sound like a long time i would have looked longer she would have looked longer and i knew she would have and i tried a couple times to kind of like get her off the beach to like come on and the way and it sucked because i couldn't just give up and let her look by herself because these waves were like fucking dangerous and kylie's not looking at the wave she's looking for the ring and i'm trying to look out for her this whole time and i'm looking I'm, I'm like god maybe i'll find the ring maybe it'll, and 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 it, it, to me i was like why wouldn't we be able to find the ring the waves crashing into the beach all this sand is going everywhere if the ring's down there it's gonna fly up with the rest of the sand yeah. and that's what i thought that was my thought too. and that's what you know and it's entirely possible but i just couldn't fucking i was just miserable me too i and felt I, horrible i still I, feel horrible i know i i feel i felt so bad for you because i i saw the pain of you losing it and i felt the pain of having to decide that it's gone and then yeah. seeing you hunt for it just looking and looking and every time a wave hits and your feet are standing there a rock rolls over you tell you th- you think it's the ring and you go pick it up and look and you mm-hmm. go no that's not it and then you see something shiny and you go in it that's not it and it's like it keeps giving you hope that you're gonna find it and see it and you're not getting there yeah and i had it was one of the most difficult things to do is just to tell you that it isn't that that you're not going to find it or that it's gone or that I had to take you off of the beach and take you back to our plane, like our stuff. Mm -hmm. And that, that sucked. That was really difficult. And it, yeah, I'm sad that you lost it. I'm sad that you had to go through that loss. You know what I mean? I know mm-hmm. it, like to other people it might just be a ring to you or something, but this meant a lot to someone. This is yeah. very significant, very sentimental. And you care about someone. You care about them when they go through painful things. And I had to sit there and wa- be helpless. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, it just felt helpless. Cause I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't like I could just retrace my steps and try to find it. Yeah. Because it was being, like, taken. Like, who mm. knows where it was. It's so uh, weird. I, it, I knew exactly where it was, but I had no idea yeah. where in that place it was. And that just really fucking sucked. And in my head, I just thought, like, 
oh, it's going to wash up and I'll be able to grab it real quick. Yeah. Like, I thought that so hard. Me too. And it, I mean, it didn't, obviously that wasn't the case. I don't know. It just, that ring meant a lot to me and it's something that I wanted to keep forever, you know? Yeah. And it just. And I wanted you to have it forever too. Yeah. And it makes my stomach drop every time I think of the fact that like, I just can't find it again. Yeah. The ocean wanted something that day and it was going to take that old lady or your ring and it fucking traded that old lady's life for your ring. That's what it feels like. Yeah. That's what it feels like. That was the, like, I've never hated the beach or the water more or felt like, like I was being like some, it like nature was taking umbrage with me and it was like lashing out against me. Mm-hmm. So weird. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was very bizarre. It's really weird, dramatic. Felt fucking surreal, painful, and it 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 sucks because me and Kylie are both fine. She's fine. She didn't get Mm -hmm. hurt. I'm fine. I didn't get hurt. The old lady walked away, hopefully, to live many many days after this, you know, and it fucking it's like I want to be bitter about it, but I also am thankful that all of that pain didn't really come from like something much worse happening too. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird feeling to Mm -hmm. like try to understand, try to Mm -hmm. like digest. Agreed. You know, and I, I don't don't know. I didn't want to trivialize it to you either and be like, it's just a ring. It's okay. You're going to be okay. I'm glad you're okay. Please don't feel bad but i did and i still I know. do and that, that was the that was one of the most difficult parts is i knew you were beating yourself up about it but it was seriously just a fucking just accident yeah. it just happened the wave came took it and it slipped off your finger i don't know like who knows what it's just one of those little things yeah that's and now I we know, have but... a story for the rest of our lives yeah an ugly story it's an ugly story and now we can add all of the cool details and make little details up along the way in the future. Okay, let's try it. Okay. But other than that, my <laughs> week's been fine. Other than that, your week's been fine? Yeah. <sighs> Watch any good shows recently? Nope, they all suck. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been watching The Boys. I fucking love that show. It's fucking... Cra- it, the first episode I was of the new season, I was like, eh, whatever. But the, the, these ne- these last few ones, I was like, holy fucking shit. Yeah. I love that show. I know I, you do. I wish you would watch it with me. Sometimes I'm like, is she seeing what's going on right now? <laughs> no. Because that show is gnarly. I think it's not that like, and I, I don't think I've even mentioned this to you yet, but I've yeah. been meaning to. Oh, shit. With the shows that you're watching right now, like The Boys and Longmire, because mm-hmm. those are kind of the mm-hmm. only two shows that like we don't watch together. Mm-hmm. It's more because I I didn't start them from the beginning. Yeah. So I, because I've watched like Longmire yeah. with you mm-hmm. when it's on a little bit and it is somewhat interesting. My mom loves that show. Oh, she does. Yeah, she watched the whole no thing. no idea. Okay. <laughs> but, uh... It's, yeah, it's just the fact that I haven't watched them from the beginning, so I figured, like, I'll let you finish these out, and then we can, like, find new shows that we both enjoy yeah, that we, we, we want to watch together. Connect over. We finally yeah. watched Knives Out last night. Oh, yeah. I fell asleep at the very end. It was so good. It was really good. It was funny. It, it was. I, think it, I, I liked think it, it was too. Ad, I was, was just really you sleepy. Were, I can't believe you made it through as much as you did. I try. I was trying so hard to stay I awake. Would, I would totally watch it again, because I know there's okay. shit I missed. Yeah. And, it makes me yeah. mad when I, I I have such a hard time staying awake through movies now, and it makes me I mad. Know, me too. I hate that. Yeah. But yeah, I fucking it was a good movie. It was. It, I think it was as good as everyone said it was. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I made me want to read a good book too. Mm-hmm. How many movies make you want to read a book? Usually, it's the other way around. Usually, That's like, true. oh, this book's really good. Can't wait to see the movie. Yeah. But yeah, you know, other than that. I don't know if I like the new, the last season of Archer that's pl- that's premiering right now. I have mixed feelings about it. I haven't seen it. 
Well, that's all right. I, I can't even believe they're still making it, if I'm being honest. I didn't realize there was a new season until you mentioned it the other day. Yeah, well, me neither. It literally began airing. Well, well, if you think about it, they're still making new Simpsons and South Park episodes. That's true. You know, still making new Family Guys. They just got renewed for, what, seasons 19 and 20? Oh, wow. I didn't realize Yeah. That. So uh, I'm kind of curious to see, like, what Family Guys become in that space. Because I stopped yeah. watching around like season nine. Oh, it was I the know, last yeah. time I was like I mean, aware I don't of think it. I've ever watched like seasons of it. Yeah, yeah, like serialized just versions it of it. On yeah, on TV. When yeah, I was well, it, a kid. Yeah, or a teenager, I'd say. <sighs> but fucking Archer premiered. I will never forget it. I was a freshman in high school. Mm-hmm. Love that show. I remember I was so excited to watch it. My mom's like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> this is so corny. I fucking loved it. And the, the, there was, there's one visual gag that like the joke was literally what was in frame in that second. So each mm-hmm. line in Archer precedes the next scene. So the last sentence the last word of your sentence starts the next uh conversation Mm -hmm. in each scene where they go to scene to scene to scene so it's like this beautiful thread that they write and sometimes it's really funny sometimes it's just like not so well done uh not everything could be perfect but like it i remember the first time i realized that they were doing callbacks Mm -hmm. that they were referencing old jokes in the show I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like that, that was my favorite comedy as a kid was like, oh, he did a callback. He made a joke about the bulging discs and not the pinched nerve, you know, like just, it's fucking like, oh, I love that shit. So yeah. it was, a, uh, it meant a lot. Like I love little inside jokes. It's like, you only know these jokes if you are that big of a fan of the show. And I've even gone back and caught things and I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God. Yeah, I used to watch it. Um, I had some friends that were really into Archer, mm-hmm. and they introduced me to it, and I really enjoyed it. When I was like mm, in high school, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, I know that I didn't appreciate it the way I probably would now if I rewatched yeah. it. Yeah, just like word, like I love wordplay. Yeah, just like things that like, oh, it's a double meaning. Avoid boring people. Avoid mm-hmm. boring people. Mm-hmm. Got it. That's fun. I love that. Um, Jake actually asked me recently, he's like, I never got into the show and I like, what's it? I don't know. I don't know if what he said, he never got into it, but I was saying, I was like, it's top three, top five favorite shows ever. Yeah. I think it's like, I know that you, I know you will loathe this comparison, but I think that Archer should have got the hype and like admiration that Rick and Morty got from everyone. You know what I mean? Like it's like this should have been like that kind of show, mm-hmm. but it wasn't because it was on a strange network that doesn't have animated shows. It's the only animated show on this network, and it's this, just this funny fucking show that that, that is a uh, like essentially r- so heavily related to Arrested Development mm-hmm. and the jokes they make and mm-hmm. the style of humor and all the meta humor, and it's just it's fucking cool. I just fucking love that. So Archer's great. So. The, th- the new season, I I don't know if I'm missing the jokes or I'm not getting them yet, or maybe I have to finish or re- rewatch season 10 or something, yeah. but I don't know. It's not really, not really hitting like I wanted it to. And I'm mostly just scared that the show's over. <laughs> oh. That, that's also, I'm like petrified. Yeah. Because when something like that ends, you know, it, it it's played a strange role. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's always there. Well, and it's, I yeah, always it's love been it. around for a long it's time been, now. Yeah, 11 seasons. Yeah, so it'd be, it's going to be weird years. when it's not. It's crazy. Came out when I was 14. Wow. I'll be 26 in April. Yuck. Yuck. I feel like 25 didn't even happen. First of all, the birthday didn't happen. And then fucking the rest of the year has been a wash. <laughs> Which reminds me, the debates are tonight. Yes. I'm going to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's so many fucking drinking games. Oh, we should do debate commentary. That would have been fun. That would have been fun. Yeah, I, th- I think. Scratch we're, this podcast. Yeah. We're doing debate commentary. That's right, Fuck folks. Fuck that old woman. Fuck my ring. <laughs> uh, fuck the pinched nerve in my bulging neck. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add before I kick you out of this podcast? Um. 
No, I don't think so. Me neither. Guys, um, go buy my mug, Bad Etiquette Podcast. Uh, search anywhere stores are found. St- I'm just kidding. Anyways, um, like, share, tweet, subscribe, rate, reply, buy cancel, block, report, buy a Mute. mug. Mute. You can fu- mute's my favorite function on social media Mine right now. Mine too. Because it's like I hate you, but I don't want you to know. Mute. Yeah. <laughs> You're annoying, but it's none of my business. Mute. You know, it's annoying. It's not your business. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you everyone who bought a mug. Um, I'll have more merch up on the store soon. Uh, you can go to the Bad Etiquette Podcast Instagram. Click the link, and that'll take you to the web store where you can buy an 11 ounce or 15 ounce mug. And we'll have some more stuff soon. Please enjoy the rest of my episodes <laughs> I have on here. Yeah. You can always go back and listen to those. Kylie's on like nine of them. Come on. This has been the Bad Etiquette Podcast. Signing off, Dallas Bronson. Kylie Montgomery. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs>